Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. It's been a bit, but that's because it's been a very, very busy month for me. I'm actually flying out tomorrow to go film a very special Halloween video for you all, so hopefully you're gonna enjoy it, because it's, it's cost a bit of money, you know? Like, jeez. It's been very stressful planning it all out, but again, I think you're gonna enjoy it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully you guys are too. But before we get talking about Halloween, we need to, of course, catch up on some FNAF news videos. Because there's been quite a bit of FNAF news going on lately, with merchandise, with a brand new FNAF Plus teaser, also a bit more info on the FNAF movie leaks we talked about not too long ago. So without further ado, Let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new, hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more FNAF news. And also, you get notified when that Halloween video goes up. So, first up, we got some book news. The Tales from the Pizzaplex number 3 Somnophobia book has been delayed to December 6th, which is a bit strange because if you didn't know, the book got leaked, or I guess some people got a hold of the book early somehow, like weeks and weeks ago. So now we just gotta wait even longer for the official release of the book. We got two brand new previews for the fourth Tales from the Pizzaplex book, Submechanophobia. In the preview, we can actually see a brand new page for the story titles. Looks like they got some short details based on the story, as you can see in the Submechanophobia title. It says, Grand Reopening, Freddy's Fantasy Water Park is now open. Buy one ticket, get the second half off. Families welcome. And then we also got the other titles for the stories in the books, Animatronic Apocalypse, that's gonna be interesting. And of course, the first part to the Bobby Dot story. In another preview, we got a bit more details about the Submechanophobia story, mainly some names. For example, Delilah is gonna be the name of the mermaid we see on the cover. Zeus, the sea dragon, and also the diver we see in one of the past covers is gonna be named Frank. You got a whole bunch of sharks like Hank, Mac, Sly, and then some other serpents, Marco and Polo. We also got the official reveal of multiple pizza plexes actually existing in the FNAF lore. This has been a theory people have had ever since the Tales book started releasing, and it seems like now that's confirmed. And then we also got the title pages for Animatronic Apocalypse. Join the Fazbear fan club every Tuesday and Thursday after school for 5th and 6th graders. Room 13. Be there or beware of the Animatronic Apocalypse. And interestingly enough, the part 1 for Bobby Dots does not have one of those short little details. Finally, we got some more previews for the upcoming Fetch graphic novel story in the second volume of the graphic novel collection for Fazbear Frights. And it looks like this is the part of the story where they first go into the abandoned restaurant, find the fetch animatronic, and then promptly run away after it, you know, frightens them a bit. That's it for the book news. Moving on to some quick merchandise news. We got even more Hot Topic security breach shirts. First one is of Roxanne Wolf, and actually it features some brand new renders of the character, which we have not seen. And then we also got a shirt in the similar style, showing off Glamrock Chica. Once again, a brand new render we haven't seen of her in the middle right there. Hello Pet officially showed off their first Sam of the Freddy Fazbear plushie. As you can see, he's coming along so, so well. Look at the little fella. Oh my god, he looks so cute. I've seen a bit of people critique the colors mainly on his head being different from the color on his ears, which I can understand. I do think it looks just a bit strange. Luckily though, like I said, this is still a first sample, so if they see any issues or they see people you know, complaining about the colors, there's still time to go back and fix that problem before they actually start producing the product. But since we are now getting official samples of the plushie, we could probably see it pretty soon, which is very exciting. The official FNAF Pillow Pet is coming pretty soon. Next up, Hex officially revealed their collectible cards for their Wave 3 plushies of Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Balloon Boy. You got Toy Freddy singing up on stage, Toy Bonnie sneaking through a vent it looks like, you got Toy Chica and her cupcake in the party room with one of the paper plate boys, and finally got Balloon Boy chilling out in the game area with the carousel in the background. Moving on now to some U2's news, interestingly enough we got a another mug coming from U2's. This is a Freddy Fazbear mug and as you can see the hat comes off of top of Freddy's head, and that is where you pour the liquid into Freddy's head. I don't know, it, it's weird describing a, a Freddy Fazbear mug. Ah, uh, but yeah, I guess we got a Freddy mug coming alongside the Vanny mug. And speaking of Vanny, you two showed off their upcoming Vanny slippers, which just look like the Vanny plushie, 
but of course have been molded to fit the wearer's feet, which again is such a weird thing to say. I, you know, it's like fanny slippers. Also, the caption doesn't help. There's just so much weird stuff going on with this post. But luckily, or unluckily if you're terrified by these creations, it doesn't seem like we're gonna have to wait too much longer for these products. YouTube says the slippers are coming out around November or December and that the mugs will release kind of around that same time, November, December. Moving along to the Pop Go series in the Fazbear Fanverse, we've got two weekly updates from Kane to catch up on, so let's go through those right now. The first post we're taking a look at is from October the 7th, so a little bit ago, I apologize. For the Pop Goes Evergreen section, Kane mentions that they're working on finishing up all of the trading cards in the game and shows off a glowing skeleton-themed Pop Goes for Halloween. He also says Garrett and I are continuing work with the special phones. The one we're working on at the moment is actually a reference to Security Breach. But remember, even though the trading cards do exist in the universe of Evergreen, that isn't the case for all of the phones. Moving on now to the October 14th weekly update. Kane says that the cards have officially been finished, every single one of them, and to celebrate the occasion, on Halloween, they'll be revealing all seven of the Halloween trading cards. He also talks a bit more about the phones, saying, I know a lot of people were disappointed at the chocolate and jukebox phones being scrapped, but trust me when I say the phones that are actually in the game are way better. And you can expect plenty of references to other FNAF games, like FNAF 1, Sister Location, Pop Goes Arcade, FNAF Plus, and more. We also get a sneak peek at the upcoming Pop Goes Arcade update, which is going to feature an actual escape menu for volume controls and also revisiting the credits and watching back the cutscenes for 100% and 200%. On top of this, they've also worked on some quality of life improvements for the game based on feedback they've received since launch, and I'll quickly show some of the changes up on screen right now. At the end of the post, he does mention that he hopes the update is going to be out by the end of this month, which I hope is the case because it looks like it's a pretty beefy update, but of course I want them to take their time, and we are scheduled to get another Pop Goes Weekly update tomorrow, I believe. At least if you're watching this video when it comes out, so I'm sure we'll get some more news on the Pop Goes Arcade update in that post. Finally, for the Fazbear Fanverse, we actually got another teaser for FNAF Plus. This one is, you know, isn't the biggest of teasers, but it is a teaser nonetheless for a brand new update in the supply closet. If you haven't been checking out Phil's recent tweets, he's been going back playing FNAF 1, challenging himself to try and beat the game without closing any doors. It's pretty interesting. But throughout all of this playthroughs, he said, so I totally forgot about that supply closet light bulb until now. Can't believe nobody ever called me out on forgetting about that goddamn light bulb. Also, it's animated. So yeah, not the biggest of, of updates, not the biggest of teasers, but hey, I thought I'd throw it in. Pretty interesting. You got a light bulb there now. I wonder if that's going to affect the lore. Also, it does say custom where the night usually is. So, you know, there's also that. Another smaller thing with FNAF Plus, Phil is thinking of doing developer live stream, showing off some progress he, he's making on the game. He said, I think now I have a good plan on how I can do developer streams like I talked about a while ago. I'll probably start these dev streams on my YouTube channel sometime in November slash December. So, very interesting. I think it'd be amazing to see kind of the developing process behind FNAF Plus. Of course, without spoiling things, Phil mentions obviously that's not something he plans on doing with the streams. Also, because he says he's going to start them in November, December time, I think it's pretty confident to say we're not going to get FNAF Plus this year. And the final topic for today, remember those FNAF movie leaks we talked about a little bit ago? You know, the ones where where Elizabeth became Abby, and for some reason, Vanessa is going to be alive alongside Michael, even though she's not, you know, supposed to be in the game's lore. It was a very confusing update, a very confusing leak, with not a lot of credibility behind it, and actually in that video, I myself even said, I don't believe this. Well, it turns out, it may actually be true. Because in that same article, something I didn't mention in the video, because again, there was not really any credibility behind it, so... It was difficult to, to say, you know, should I mention this or not? They did say it would be filming in Louisiana. And lo and frickin' behold, Production Weekly, which is a credible source, you may remember us talking about them again a little bit ago where FNAF was actually mentioned in their production lineup, has listed the filming location of the FNAF film 
in Louisiana, and that it's also going to be start filming on February 1st. Finally, they also have a short description for the film saying, It follows a night security guard as he begins working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. While spending his first night on the job, he realizes the gig won't be so easy as the animatronic animals that entertain kids during the day play their own sinister games at night. All but confirming the film is going to be based on the gameplay of FNAF 1 with Mike Lafton. And you may remember, this also kind of aligns with the description we got of Michael's character getting the gig at Freddy's in that leaked article with the character description. So it turns out, maybe in the film we are gonna see Abby and for some reason Vanessa. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, especially with the timeline things like Michael working at Freddy's definitely does not happen anywhere close to Vanessa being even alive. And also the strange name change of Abby. I know some people said that <laughs> it's short for Elizabeth, which I have not seen any credibility behind that claim. No, it's freaking not. <laughs> if anything, it would be short for Abigail. But they were like, no, back in ye olden days. And it's like, well, is it, it's not the olden days anymore. Also, they said it was an anagram for baby, which again, just, you know, FNAF fans stretching to the absolute oomph degree. It was very strange. I'm not going to lie, but it seems like it's all but confirmed. They got it right. So that's going to be interesting to see Vanessa alongside Michael. I don't know. It's just a crazy debacle, something that I don't think we were expecting. So um, again, we're just going to have to wait and see how it turns out. But that's all the FNAF news we got to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.